Hello, hello. Today we are starting the book of Acts as we have completed the four Gospels. Now the book of Acts is labeled by many the Acts of the Apostles. Uh, I think a better title that clarifies the events of the book would be the Acts of the Holy Spirit. The reason is, is because this book is all about the working of the Holy Spirit through the church in Jerusalem and then through the rest of the local churches that are planted by missionaries. Acts was written by Luke, uh, the same one who wrote the gospel according to Luke. And if you notice in verse 1 of Acts, it refers to the Gospel of Luke. Uh, he, he talks about the former treatise uh, I, I have written unto you. So, in fact, Acts picks up right where Luke ended the Gospel. Acts chapter 1 sort of overlaps Luke chapter number 24. Luke writes here in the first chapter that Jesus showed himself alive after he had been crucified and was seen of them for 40 days. And Jesus told them that they should wait at Jerusalem for the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit. And they asked Jesus when he will restore the kingdom to Israel. And Jesus told them that it was not for them to know. And then we find in verse number 8, the theme of the book of Acts, as you can actually find Acts, is divided up according to, these, uh, according to this verse. Jesus said, after they receive power, when the Holy Spirit has come upon them, that they will be witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So we see that it unfolded exactly as Jesus said it would. So as we read the rest of this book, you are going to see that unfolded. The witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. After this, Jesus ascends back into heaven and two angels come and they ask why they are standing there looking at the sky. And they remind them that Jesus will come again. The disciples, they went back to Jerusalem and they prayed together. Uh, Peter, the one that we just talked about in John chapter 21, uh, that would be the leader, uh, Peter begins to talk. And Peter points out that prophecy was fulfilled when Judas betrayed Christ. Now, if you remember right, that they were in the upper room with Jesus, and Jesus said that one would betray him, but none of them knew who it was. And even as Judas gets up to leave, they still don't completely understand. But now we find after the fact uh, that Peter explains that it was Judas that betrayed Jesus. And it all made sense. We then see that they vote on another apostle and they picked a man named Matthias at the end of chapter one. Uh, chapter two, it begins with the day of Pentecost and Jesus had uh, ascended 40 days after his resurrection. And now we come to Pentecost, which is 50 days after the resurrection. Uh, this means that they had been waiting for 10 days when the Holy Spirit came upon them and it filled the house where they were. This is known as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And against what the Pentecostals teach, this was a one-time event for the church in Jerusalem. Uh, this is not a, uh, a personal thing for the believer, but this was for the church as a whole. And this is not the beginning of the church as some believe or teach, but this is the empowerment of the church to carry out the commission that Christ had left to her. It then lists that there were people from all over the known world that were gathered at Jerusalem for Pentecost. And Peter stands up and he begins to preach. And he reveals that this was prophesied in the book of Joel, and it was being fulfilled before their eyes. And Peter preaches the gospel to them all. And he tells of how Jesus died because they crucified him, but he rose from the dead just as it was prophesied by David in the Psalms. What is beautiful here is that these people, they, they all spoke different languages. But they all understood in their own language. So this is speaking in tongues according to the Bible. Again, a false teaching is that speaking in tongues is some unknown language. But really, all speaking in tongues was 
is that the Holy Spirit took what Peter spoke and the Holy Spirit translated it so that every person could hear the gospel in their own language or their own tongue, if you would. The tongue or language that Peter spoke may have been unknown to the hearers, but yet the Holy Spirit translated it so that when it came to their ears, they understood it and they could believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. As they heard the gospel being preached, they were pricked in their heart. We call this conviction today. Conviction is not a bad thing, but it is a good thing. They asked what they should do, and so Peter told them to repent and then to be baptized. Now, it's important to note here that salvation uh, does not come through baptism. Uh, I want you to understand that it is the repentance that causes the remission of sins. Baptism is something that follows our salvation. Uh, baptism isn't what does the saving, but is an act of obedience after being saved. And so we see that in the verses that are to follow. We see that there was a, an order to this, that they received his word. In other words, they were saved. And then secondly, they were baptized. This was after their repentance and faith in Jesus. And then there was added unto them about 3,000, it says, you know, they joined the church that was already in existence. So if the church started on Pentecost, as some teach, then what was it that these people were added to? You see, they were added to the church that was already in existence. Jesus started his church during his personal ministry here on the earth. And now we see on Pentecost that they are empowered uh, and, and then they begin to grow. We then see the design of a strong local church at the end of chapter number two. We see that they continued in the apostles' doctrine. We see that they had fellowship with one another and had everything in common. We see that they prayed together. We see that they feared God. We see that they shared what they have. And finally, we see that they praised God together. At this time, we're looking at Psalm 121 and 122. Uh, psalm 121 is a psalm about a pilgrim who is traveling to Jerusalem and finds assurance that God will protect him during his journey. He says that his help comes from the Lord. The Lord is the one who keeps Jerusalem and the Lord is the one who keeps him. What about you? Where does your help come from? Do you have the assurance that the one who made heaven and earth is keeping you? I hope that you have that. Psalm 122 is a psalm of David. And notice that it is yet another psalm about going up to Jerusalem. In particular, David says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. He then asked that the people pray for the peace of Jerusalem and for peace within its walls. In particular, he says to pray for the peace and good of Jerusalem. Why? Because of the house of God that is there. Let me ask you this question. Are you actively praying for the peace of Jerusalem? What about praying for the church, which is the habitation of God? We should be daily praying for these things, praying for Jerusalem and also praying for the local New Testament church. Uh, I pray that you are a part of one. If not, uh, we would love to have you here and uh, would encourage you to reach out. This time we're looking at Proverbs 16, verses 18 to 20. Proverbs 16, 18 to 20. Uh, this is a very well-known verse in verse number 18. Uh, when we are full of pride and haughtiness, we will fall. In other words, God is going to bring us down. It's not a matter of if, but a matter of when. In verse 19, we find that it is better to be humble and poor than to be rich and share the treasures of the proud. Because again, your fall is going to come. Verse 20, uh, here again, we see wisdom being our friend. We will find good always comes from wisely making decisions and making our choices according to wisdom. 
And we also find that trusting in the Lord brings happiness. If you really want happiness, trust in the Lord and seek after him. Let's bow our heads. Our wonderful God, we thank you again. Lord, just lead us today. Uh, lead us through uh, the rest of this week, Lord, on into Sunday. And I just pray that we would gather together and worship you in your house. That we would say as David did, uh, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Uh, Lord, we do pray for Jerusalem. We pray for its peace. Uh, and God, uh, we pray uh, that uh, uh, your coming would be quick. And Father, that we would see you face to face and see you make right all that is wrong in the world. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.